Good morning and welcome to St. Giles with St. Thomas for our online morning service. My name is Reverend Josh Penduck. I'm the rector of St. Giles with St. Thomas and it's a joy and a privilege to be able to welcome you here today. We come today to think about Jesus' call to us. His call to follow after him. And so um, as we enter into that thought, let us now just have a few moments of silence before we begin our service. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. But we also come as people who know we've messed up, we've done wrong. We haven't lived to our full potential. We've hurt others, we've hurt ourselves, and we've sinned against God. But we're able to come to a God who loves us, who delights in us, who forgives us freely. So, if you would like to respond after me, whenever I say, Lord, have mercy, if you can say, Lord, have mercy, when I say, Christ, have mercy, say, Christ, have mercy. So let us come to our confession. Lord God, we have sinned against you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, we have done evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord God, have mercy on us according to your love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Bible reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, beginning at the 14th verse. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As they went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I read that Bible passage, the first thing I think of is one of those 1950s movies like King of Kings, where Jesus goes up to those disciples and says, come, follow me. And immediately they, they just drop their nets and just leave, leave with him. And it, you just left thinking, was it really like that? Why did they just leave like that? I mean... If, if some strange guy come, out, come over to you and said to you, come follow me, you're not exactly going to do it. So it, it always confused me why the disciples just did that, why they just left everything to follow after Jesus. Well, knowing about the context really helps our understanding here. When we look at first century ba Palestine where Jesus lived, you have to remember that 
um, the rabbis were at the centre of the educational system. Um, you kind of had your primary school and then your middle school and then your, uh, your university levels. And they were called Beit Sefer, Beit Talmud and Beit uh, Midrash. And um, basically what you would do, you would go to your rabbi as a little child and you would be expected to learn off by heart the first five books of the Bible. So by the age of 10, you are supposed to be able to have learnt off by heart all that. Off by heart, by the age of 10. Now, most kids probably couldn't do that. But the best um, of them then went on to the next bit, which, so that was Beit Sefer, and they went on to the next bit, the best of the best, went on to do um, Beit Talmud. And from the age of 10 to about the age of 14, 15, what they would do is then memorise the whole of the Old Testament. Genesis all the way to Malachi, off by heart. So, then what would happen? Once again, even the best the best kids would struggle. So the best of the best would then, once they had done that, they would go up to a rabbi and to try and do Beit Midrash, which is kind of like the university level. And they would go to a rabbi. The rabbi would quiz them and ask some questions and things like that um, about... Uh, um, about the, the Torah, which was the Old Testament as we call it today. They would have a um, quiz them about that. And if they felt they were good enough, they said they would say to them, OK, come, follow me. So that's what the rabbi would say, at which point you would follow after the rabbi. You would copy him at every point. Um, you would um, you would often see um, a rabbi walking down the roads in Palestine with the with all their disciples following after them, and it, it was the joke that uh, if the if the rabbi uh, uh, needed uh, got something in his eye, you um, to when the rabbi rubbed um, that out of his eye, all the disciples would also rub it out of their eye as well. It was a it was a bit exaggerated that joke was, but that's how much you imitated after. Your rabbi, because it was believed that your rabbi knew what it was to live, knew what it was to be in a holy relationship with God. And so you wanted to do everything you could to be like your rabbi. So what happens if you didn't make the cut? If you couldn't learn the whole of the, uh, the Old Testament or even just the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible? Well, you went off and you did an apprenticeship, usually with your family. So um, carpenters would go and do carpentry and uh, uh, fishermen would go and work with their fathers, be apprentices with their fathers. So what happens? You have this man who's well known by now, he's a rabbi, called Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. And he walks up to the first disciples who are on their fishing boats. What does that mean? They're on their fishing boats. It means they didn't make the cut. They weren't the best of the best. They were the B team because they were working with their father. They weren't good enough to follow after the rabbi. So, knowing all that, when Jesus, this rabbi, says to them, Come, follow me. No wonder they drop their nets. It's almost like, say, somebody saying to, saying to you today, um, I've got a million pounds for you. Of course you would drop everything you would do. Because suddenly, in the middle of their lives, their lives were ones where they didn't make the cut. They weren't the best of the best. There may be a sense of disappointment amongst the, the disciples. And yet, suddenly, in the middle of all that, Jesus says, come follow me. I think 
you would go too. I'd go. Suddenly I'm no longer the B team. Suddenly I've made the cut. This is who Jesus is. Jesus doesn't necessarily go for the best of the best. When Jesus calls us to follow him, it's usually because, well, we're the B team. We're the ones who haven't succeeded in life. Often we're the ones who uh, haven't got everything right. And yet Jesus calls us to follow him. Jesus calls us to imitate him, to be like him. And in calling us, he believes that we can do it. You know, those disciples, they were the B team. They weren't great. They, didn't, they hadn't made the cut for the, the rabbinical call system. Yet Jesus still called them. And through Jesus, those disciples went on to change the world. Change the world. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know whether you feel like, that's it for me, I can't do anything more now. Maybe uh, um, feeling too old, maybe feel too young to do anything. You know what? Jesus says, come, follow me. Not because you're the best of the best. Not because even you, um, you've made, you made the cut in other places. Rather, because Jesus sees you and he thinks, you know, I can do amazing things through them. So today, my encouragement to you, my encouragement is when you hear Jesus' call, come follow me, which he makes to us every day, treasure it. Because Jesus is saying, I don't care whether you're not the best of the best. What I care about is what I can do with you and boy does he do amazing things with people. Amen. Are you
Christ is risen. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Whenever I say, Lord, you have called us, please respond by saying, make us worthy of our calling. And the words for that can be found at the bottom of the screen. Holy Father, strengthen each in their vocation and ministry. Help us to see how we need each other and to share the talents and abilities which you give us. Guide by your Holy Spirit all who are called to ordination. We pray for theological colleges, for tutors and students, for all who are seeking to serve others. Lord, as you have called us, make us worthy of our calling. Grant grace to all who care for others in their daily work. We pray for doctors, nurses and ambulance workers for the fire brigade and the police and social workers. We remember also shopkeepers and bakers. Lord, that each of them may show love and care in their actions. Lord, as you have called us, make us worthy of our calling. We give you thanks and praise for all who have cared for us. Bless with your goodness our homes and loved ones. Strengthen us in the service of our community. Guide us that we may bring joy and peace to others. Lord, as you have called us, make us worthy of our calling. Holy and strong one, be a comfort to all who have been hindered in living their lives to the full. We remember all whose vocation has been thwarted through illness, through poverty, through the prejudice of others. We pray for all who are unemployed or have been made redundant, for all who feel their lives are being wasted. We pray for all in sickness or weakness. Lord, as you have called us, make us worthy of our calling. We give you praise for all who have fulfilled their work on earth and now serve before you in your glorious kingdom. We remember our loved ones departed. May we at the last rejoice with them in life everlasting. Lord, as you have called us, make us worthy of our calling. Almighty God, whose will is to restore all things, and your beloved Son, the King of all, Govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
as we close a prayer of blessing. The God of grace, who has called us to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, strengthen and settle you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you and all those whom you love and care for this day and always. Amen.